This video is intended for ophthalmology residents and eye surgeons all over the world who want to learn small incision cataract surgery. First, the eyeball is turned down with the help of a muscle hook and the superior rectus tendon is got hold of. I failed to catch at the first attempt but I could catch at the second attempt and now a superior rectus brittle suture is applied. This helps a lot in making sclerocorneal tunnel. It makes the eyeball stable throughout the tunnel making procedure and it helps a lot during nucleus delivery. Now conjunctival peritomy is done for about 2 clock hours, say from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock. First a uh, neck and then the conjunctiva is, this is tenons, an opening has been made in the tenons and both conjunctiva and tenons are being, take, are being taken together and this incision, this peritomy is being done. We must expose the sclera if we want to do, do a very nice job. The sclera is exposed and then very mild cautery is done to get a bloodless field for making sclerocorneal tunnel. This is a very mild weight field cautery, bipolar weight field cautery. The cautery is done. Care is taken not to cause any shrinkage of the scleral surface. And now an incision on the sclera. This is near the limbus. Beginner surgeons cannot do a long tunnel. So this is about one millimeter behind the limbus. And this is almost a straight incision. And now going to a certain depth of say about one, one third to one half of the sclera, this sclerocorneal tunnel is met. The tunnel goes about 1 millimeter to 1.5 millimeter into the clear cornea. Width of this tunnel is about 6.5 millimeter. And now, a sideboard is made at around 9 o'clock and the keratom is being used to make the sideboard. An air bubble is injected. Underneath this air bubble, tripan blue dye is applied to stain the anterior capsule. And now, the entity chamber is filled up with 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. We 
Visco has been applied over the corneal epithelium for a better visibility. Now, capsulorexis is done with the help of this cystitome, and this has been prepared by bending a 26 gauze disposable needle. Capsular tag is raised, this capsular tag is guided all around with the needle to get an adequate size to rexis. In SICs, the size of the rexis should be between 5.5 to 6 millimeters. It should not be less than 5.5 millimeters. And in hard cataracts, it should not be less than 6 millimeter. And now the tunnel is opened. And now is the time to do hydro dissection. Hydro dissection is done with ring lactate or balanced salt solution. The nucleus is stacked and the nucleus is rotated. And now the anterior chamber is filled up with 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. Now a Sinsky hook is taken, the nucleus is dialed and it is prolapsed out of the capsular bag. And now visco is applied between corneal endothelium and the lens mass and some visco behind the lens mass. Now an irrigating vectus goes behind the lens mass and the nucleus is gently delivered. The irrigating vectus is used to remove some more epinuclear material, but to remove the cortex we have to take help of a Simco cannula. The Simco cannula goes through the side port. Most of the cortex can be removed going through the side port. Why through the side port? Because the side port incision is smaller, the antechamber remains nicely formed if we go through the side port. In this case, we have removed all the cortex through the side port and by this Simcoe cannula. This is a 22 gauze Simcoe cannula. And now the anterior chamber and the capsular bag is filled up with 2% SPMC and then in this case, we are implanting a PMMA intraocular lens, single piece polymethyl methacrylate intraocular lens. This is a rigid lens and this is a very good lens. The lens the leading haptic goes in the capsular bag and the trailing haptic is guided in the capsular bag. This is a Sinsky hook. And our surgery is done but we have lot of things to do. The most important thing is to remove the viscoelastic substance thoroughly. Should not leave any viscoelastic substance believing it will get absorbed by through the trabecular meshwork. Yes, it may get absorbed but it will cause raised intraocular pressure for few days and in those few days the patient will curse you the patient will have pain, the patient cannot see clearly, there will be steamy corneal edema, so lot of problems. 
So, if we just dedicate one or two minutes extra to remove the visco, the patient will have clear cornea, normal intraocular pressure and the patient will bless you. This is a bit of moxifloxacin and now I am going to apply a suture to oppose the conjunctiva to the limbus. Some colleagues use cautery, it causes shrinkage of the conjunctiva and the conjunctiva comes near the limbus, but it destroys lot of cells which I do not like. This is the most atraumatic way of opposing the conjunctiva to the limbus. I have injected subconjunctival dexamethasone and gentamicin and now I am going to this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber. The anterior chamber is nicely formed and now the suture is tied and this is going to be a releasable suture. In a releasable suture we just make three or four loops in this case I am going to make three loops. Watch carefully this is one two and three and then hold the suture and pull it and the conjunctiva will be nicely opposed to the limbus. Cut it here, the other thread is also cut and this releasable suture can be removed on the third or fourth postoperative day. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.